Welcome to day two of the letter L. Today we're going to be looking at how you can determine which parts of a letter should overlap. And I find that the easiest way to do that is to grab a piece of ribbon and actually create the letter out of the ribbon. Now, of course, when you create your letter, you're going to end up with certain lines on top and other ones down below. I personally like to try to get a long extension of one single line, at least somewhere, which means this one, it's going on top right here, but then here it goes underneath. So I would like to either swap this one underneath or the other one to the top. Having that one consistent line can help the eye flow more easily through the letter. So let's use this long body downstroke as our consistent line and create a little bit of a shadow for these lines that would be going down underneath that main downstroke. The easiest way to do this is to take a color that is slightly darker and also keep your original color on hand. This one will be used to blend out the darker color. You can test out colors on the side of your paper. Make sure that there is enough difference that the shadow will be obvious. It's just like in black and white photography. You always want to have areas that are white and areas that are true black with all the shades of gray in between. If you don't use one that gives you that deep contrast of the true black, it's just going to look like another L. A richer color like this is definitely a better option. I like to have both of my pens uncapped and I work with them in one or two hands, but they're always ready to go. The first thing that you want to do is put a dot of color right on the edge where that ribbon or portion of the letter would be going underneath the L. Then blend that out a little bit with that same color using light feathering strokes. Next, go back in with your lighter color and grab the end of that stroke and just continue to pull it up a little bit. This will pull some of the color gently up your L to make it look like a more natural shadow. Now, when I did that, the shadow actually got quite small, so you can always go back and continue to add layers until you get something that looks like a definite shadow and distinctly looks different than the portion of your letter that's going to stay on top. You can also turn your letter so that it's easy for you to get nice control and so that you won't be putting your hand on top of your felt pen and ending up with smudges all over the side of your hand, which, believe me, will end up back on your paper. And of course, it'll end up in the worst possible location. So put that red in there and then bring your lighter color in and drag it out just a little bit to create a nice gentle gradient of color. We've done the top curve now. Let's move on to the bottom curve and create that overlap. So again, we will be adding the shadow first closest to that downstroke very carefully and then pulling it out and blending it with the lighter or original base color. Turn your page and do the same for your next side. Coloring right up against your downstroke, pulling it out, and then going in with your original color and pulling that out to create a gradient. Now we have created a letter that has obvious areas of overlap. You can always go back with that same shadow color and deepen the shadows if you'd like to have more distinction. Or you can go in now with an even darker color and touch just beside those downstrokes. But make sure that you are being very careful because you don't want any of that to bleed over into your nice light backbone. The other option is to add the shadow within that downstroke. Again, you just want to be consistent about which one is going underneath and which one is going over top. When you have two areas like this, right in here, where you have to have it happen twice, maybe you want to consider flipping to the other side, 
or just make sure that your shadow areas don't go for too long so you still end up with a bit of that original color glow in the center of the body. Try using this technique on a letter or a word that means something special to you because you do have to put a little bit of extra work into the letter, but it also makes it look extra special. Next day, we're going to add one more finishing touch that can really help to enhance the overall layering of your letter.